In the late 1890s, Englishman J.J. Thompson was working and discovered electrons. Their charge to mass ratio was measured in his laboratory, and if you're fortunate, you too will have the opportunity to repeat Thompson's experiment that would have won you the Nobel Prize had you been the first to do it way back when. Subsequent to that, American Robert A. Millikan worked to measure the electrical charge of the electron. When that number was combined with the value of Thompson's charge to mass ratio, then Millikan effectively determined the electron's mass as well. Millikan won the Nobel Prize for his work. Working in Millikan's lab at the time was Harvey Fletcher, a recent graduate student who joined Millikan's lab and would later lead the famous Bell Laboratories in a whole lot of audio research. Fletcher was responsible for developing stereophonic recording, for example. I would like you to hear Harvey Fletcher describe in his own words his work on Millikan's important oil drop experiment. his retirement from Bell Laboratories in 1949, he was director of physical research, but have focused many of his researches on the improvement of sound transmission, described in papers such as auditory perspective and a space-time pattern theory of hearing. He is the author of the well-known work, Speech and Hearing. He has been honored by many universities. Did some of the original work on the oil drop experiment for measuring the electronic charge, I believe. Yes, uh, I can tell you that story. Uh, it's been repeated by a lot of people. It came from there, or there at the time, and so forth. A lot of rumors about what happened, but I, I can tell you as I remember it, the, the way I remember it, it may not be the same as Professor Millikan remembered it. He's not not living, and so he can't say anything more about it. But. Uh, while I was there, he was very, very good to me and helped me get started. But on the second year of my graduate work, I went to Professor Millikan and asked him what I could do for a thesis, for a PhD thesis. And he was quite a busy man, and he was working with Professor Begeman. Uh, Professor Begeman was a graduate student, and he was working for his PhD, and they were working on uh, uh, with small droplets of water. There was a little, uh, oh, as I remember, just remembering it, it was about two or three inches in diameter each, each way, not more than that, and they had the microscope right up close to it. And it was a, they had outside a means where I could suddenly release the pressure so as to produce a fog in the way ordinarily they do. And having it focused, they could see the little oil, the little water drops. And they would fall. And they were trying to get the rate of fall across, across the field, across crosshairs in the field. But the water drops would uh, evaporate in about two or three seconds. They'd be gone. Well, as I came in, and uh, he said to come down there where they were working and even discuss it. Uh, and then the three of us discussed the thing as to what we could do to stop this evaporation. So we, we mentioned several things. Why not try and... Mercury was mentioned, mercury drops, and oil drops, and we mentioned a dozen other things. And Millikan told me, he said, well, why don't you go down and set it up and try oil drops? Well, not uh, being acquainted with uh, very elaborate apparatus, I went down, cooked up the easiest thing I knew how, and I put two, got, got plates about that big around, stuck a electrode on each one of them, and brought them together to make a, a field. Uh, uh, I support them on the regular laboratory stand, you know. And got out, there uh, was an arc light, which was in the laboratory. Uh, just ordinary carbon that we bring together. Put a lens in front of it. 
focused the beam so that it went through there so that it chopped these drops. And I went down to the drugstore, which is a short distance away, and got an atomizer that they ladies use and, and got some oil, oil it and, and spurted it over the top of this thing. Didn't even have it enclosed. It was all free. And uh, we also had in the laboratory that Millikan had been using Vagabond. I lugged over one of those uh, thousand volt bangs where they had uh, the little dice, the little cells, uh, all connected in series to produce about a thousand volts. And I had it so that I could switch those on to and off with a little switch that I turned back and forth. And I think it was a little mercury switch of very the sort of thing the engineers had, uh, not the uh, engineers had done, but a physicist of field engineer with it, and thing like that. Well, after that was when I first tried it. And uh, it was quite, uh, it was a real revelation, because when you looked in there, although there was drafts and the drift, the little drops away, but uh, they were just by good luck, they were just the right size for the size plates we had and so forth. And they had all the colors of the rainbow and they were just the right size. So some of them would be blue and some of them would be red. And maybe you looked at one of those. Yes, I have. And so, well, that, uh, that's the first time we I'd ever seen, I think anybody had ever seen that picture. And of course, they were all trembling yep. due to the brownie movements. But when I turned on the switch, half of them went one way and half of them went the other way. So I had one. I played around all that afternoon and I got a pretty good value of ease just that, that same afternoon. Well, I called Professor Milliken. He wasn't, uh, he was busy. And I didn't get him for uh, about a, well, I think it was a two, not that day and the next day, but the third day. He came down. And he worked with me every day after that for <laughs> two years after we saw it. That's what happened. Uh, when you went, I think that he did. Uh, he worked for. He worked on this at long uh, three years after I left the university. For five years, he had students working on it, and he did a magnificent job. But at least the starting of it, I had to. Uh, I had this little decent yeah. fun to begin with. What you just saw, this interview of Harvey Fletcher telling in his own words his work with the Milken oil drop experiment, to me is a very exciting piece of historical documentation. To hear a man talk about the beginning of the experiment who is actually there to see the thing happen, that is just really something else. In essence, Milliken and Fletcher balanced the electrostatic force acting on excess electrons attached to oil drops by the gravitational force on the drops by the earth and the viscous force on the drops due to air. Your authors have diagrammed the apparatus on page 750 of your text. When these forces are balanced, the drops move with constant velocity and measuring their movements allows a measurement of the excess charge on the drops. The magnitude of the charge was always found to be an integer multiple of some small charge, and we've come to call that small charge the elementary charge, the charge on the electron, E. Numerically, that charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We have a couple of simulations to illustrate the setup of the experiment. In this first simulation, you see the apparatus as Millikan worked with it after Fletcher had developed the technique. There are a pair of charged plates. In this diagram, the top plate is positive and the bottom plate is negative. There's a hole in the top plate and there's a telescope that someone's looking through at the side in order to observe the drops. There's an X-ray source over on the left side that's able to be turned on and off in order to electrically charge the drops. In order to get the experiment going, there is an atomizer over here that, when the bulb is squeezed, squirts drops into the area above the top plate. Drops fall through the hole, and then those drops are followed by watching through the telescope. And in this simulation, we'll squeeze 
there are some drops falling. Now a single charge makes it, a single drop makes it through and is allowed to fall between the plates. One can increase or decrease the amount of voltage that is here and then play with the experiment again. Depending on how much excess charge there is on the drop, it may be that the drop moves downward or the drop moves upward. Here is a second simulation of what would have been seen through the telescope. Up here, there's a, it's called a, actually a microscope because you're looking at a small area instead of something that's very, very far away. And in this field of view, there are some crosshairs that are separated by a known distance. You see down below a schematic of the apparatus with the sprayer, the microscope, the x-rays that can come in, and the plates with electric field, the voltage that's between them. The oil falls down in between, and these drops that are between the plates can be followed. If I spray some oil in, it looks like the drops come in from the bottom. That's because the microscope actually inverts the image that you see. So real images of these drops would appear in the microscope and if you continue to spray, more and more drops appear and are allowed to fall in the presence of gravity. So from the microscope point of view, the bottom plate is at the top of the field of view and the top plate is at the bottom of the field of view. One can ionize the drops and then turn on the electric field. And when the electric field is turned on, some of the drops fall to the bottom faster and some of them rise. If you turn off the field, all of the drops are allowed to fall again in the presence of gravity. If you turn the field on, then the drops move in response to the electric field. And one can switch the field back and forth, making the top plate positive or the bottom plate positive and make the drops move. And one can actually follow drops for a long period of time. This simulation is one that is uh, very realistic and if you have an opportunity to play with it, then I encourage you to scroll down to see what the instructions say about doing the experiment and to actually follow all of the mathematics that goes along with it. There is some fluid mathematics, fluid mechanics that you will not actually be responsible for on the AP exam that's part of the determination of the charge of the droplet, but at least it gives you a feel for what the experiment looks like. For the AP physics exam, you will likely just need to know that the Millikan oil drop experiment is important because the determination was made of what the numerical value for the elementary charge on the electron is. And combining that experiment's results with the results of J.J. Thompson's measurement of E over M allowed for determination of the mass of the electron.